Hey, Bob Nagy, AB5N again here with another piece of interesting equipment to take a look at. I'm going to be talking about a piece of gear from Zigu, the Chinese manufacturer that's been focusing on QRP radios. Their latest two, the G90 and X5105, have been very, very popular. And I have here, first one in the country, the GSOC, or 7-inch color remote control touchscreen console for those two radios. This is an interesting piece of kit, as they say in the United Kingdom. We're going to take a look at what this thing could do with its 1.0 firmware and sort of think about what it might mature into being able to do in the future. Let's get on with it. So let's take a look at the physical body first. It's made of heavy gauge steel plate like the radios it connects with. Build quality is substantial. It's not too heavy though. And the main tuning dial is a huge improvement over the one on the radios. The tuning knob has a nice finger indent and that rotates independently of the main tuning dial. If you want to change your tuning increment, just touch the digit you want to tune in, like 100 hertz in this case, and there you go. The display is 1024 resolution, which I feel is the real sweet spot for a 7-inch screen. Any higher resolution and you'd need like Eagle Eye Vision to read the very small text details. There are two concentric controls on the top right, and one on the left controls the bandwidth bottom and top edges, and the other the AGC squelch and volume. There are seven push buttons total on the top right. RIT control, power output, automatic antenna tuner, and three user configurable buttons. And of course your power on and off and it also locks. You'll notice that there are second labels under a couple of them and that's holding in the button for a longer time to get your RF gain control and initiate the automatic tuning. The connectors on the left side of the unit include two USB connectors for a keyboard and a mouse say and an SD card slot for recording your memory channels. Your right side includes a power connector, the RJ45 microphone connector, and an IF connector for future expansion. The rear of the GSOC is where you connect the IQ connection, which is raw digital data, the 9-pin DB9, which was originally connected to the front of the G90, and you've got a speaker or headphone output. Two nice little metal legs are also provided to allow you to sit the GSOC on the table nicely. Along the bottom of the main screen, you'll see you have two selections, scope and radio. Along the scope selections here, you're going to see you have a span control to change your span of the spectral display, your level control to adjust the sensitivity of the trace on top, and your display control where you can slide these sliders and change the color of the spectral display. You can do it with your finger or you can just press a button plus and minus. If you select the radio menu, you have these selections. First is the modem over here, which is your PSK31 screens. You hit the little X to turn it off. You have your transmit and receive equalizers here, and you can select which one you want to adjust and turning them on and off. And next you have the digital signal processing. And here you've got your noise reduction, noise blanker, notch filter, compressor, and Vox. And um, some of them have a adjustment with a sliding dot and some of them are just on and off. When you're done with it you always press the right arrow to get out of the menu. Last is the system here. You've got your CW, keyer, mic gain, line in, line out levels and you have that same slider bar or plus and minus buttons to adjust the values of each one of these. I would expect that some of the layout of these buttons may change in future firmware revisions. Changing bands is really easy. You just hit the megahertz button and then you're presented with all the bands here on the left. You can just press the button and go there or use the up and down band button and that also lets you increment through the short wave bands as well as the ham bands. There are other buttons on this menu selection which we'll also talk about a little bit later. To use the RIT, you just hit the RIT button and then this menu comes up and you can adjust the main tuning dial up or down to shift your receiver above or below the receive frequency. To adjust your RF gain, you hold in the second button for a long press and this menu pops up. Then use your main tuning dial to adjust your RF gain. I find a setting of about 35 is pretty good for me. To adjust your RF power output level, just hit that middle button momentarily. This menu pops up. Use your main VFO tuning dial to adjust your power and hit the right button to get out. There's a few selections in the frequency window here that you need to know about. That's preamp, attenuator, and normal. The next, of course, is AGC and that's very important, fast, slow, and off. You also have another mode selector in here. You can select it from the 
you know, main screen or in here, all through your different modes. Also, um, split operation is inside of here in case you have a split operation or contesting. There's your VFO to memory button and your memory selection. Here's the memory editing window over here and you can uh, set that up and save it to the SD card and load it from the SD card and throw it in the garbage. Hit the check mark to get out. I did want to show you the bandwidth adjustment in action. The taller, smaller knob adjusts the bottom end of the DSP IF bandwidth and the outer one does the higher frequency. Engaging the automatic antenna tuner is easy. Just hold the button in for a few seconds. You'll see it do its thing, the meters come up, and then you're tuned. I wanted to take a quick look at the PSK31 modem here. As you can see, the receive audio is being decoded in the left screen. The fellow's typing pretty slowly. And your TX message would go into the right screen over here. There's a send button on the bottom right of the screen there. And I would suggest tuning in a 1 hertz increment. And as you tune across the signal, you'll see that that blue tuning bar goes up and down, indicating that you have a perfect tune. And then you'll see the receiver start to decode. For the other digital modes, you would interface a PC with the body of the radio as you would normally. Now remember that in the mode selector here, this does add narrowband FM to the G90 SDR radio. It's very useful for 10 meter operation. Now let's just tune around a bit in SSB and CW and have some fun. We're just listening to the little speaker inside the GSOC itself. The uh, main trunk has to let the sap come out in the spring as it's uh, going up. And then the insects work in the Over the hill, gang, so you'll probably have a lot of them, too. Talk to you later, Bill, 7-3. The features and functions of the GSOC will no doubt evolve over time. The look of the display and layout may change a little bit. This is a demo unit with 1.0 firmware in it, but it's quite functional as it stands right now. I wanted to give you guys an early look at this thing, and I am having a lot of fun with it. So there you have it. Interesting piece of gear. Now, Zigu has been very responsive to suggestions that I've given them, I'm sort of a beta tester for them, on how they should refine their products in our market especially. They have really come across almost everything I've suggested to them, they have done. Now, as this stands with the 1.0 firmware, it's stable, it functions correctly, and I think that it's, it's uh, you know, worth launching as it is, but what it might mature into is really sort of open for uh, conjecture because there's a lot of horsepower in this box. So let's keep an eye on this thing, and I'm going to enjoy this one here, go back to playing with it. Took me a while to uh, stop playing with it and make the video. Take care. We'll see you next time.